do it in the length. It's early, but already the day is hot. Have you got sunscreen? But this group of women and men has a task ahead, and weather will not deter them. We're pulling a stone to commemorate the civilian casualties of war and terrorism. The stone is granite. It weighs 1,400 pounds. But the iron frame it's on and the case on and the stone all together weigh 5,000 pounds. Andrea LeBlanc is a veterinarian from Lee, New Hampshire. She's here with friends and strangers as part of Stonewalk. One step at a time, they're walking from Boston, the site of the Democratic National Convention, to New York City, the site of the Republican National Convention. Boston to New York um, is more than just the two cities where the, where the um, Republican and Democratic conventions are being held. It's an attempt on our part to reclaim the past as one of peace rather than one of terror. Terror is something Andrea knows well. Her husband Robert, a geography professor at the University of New Hampshire, was aboard one of the hijacked planes that left Boston on September 11th. 10 a.m. back in New York, the Trade Center's South Tower crumbles to the ground. Eventually, Andrea's grief led her to join an organization called September 11th Families for Peaceful Tomorrows. Terrorism's come as close as it can to the 9-11 families, and um, we don't want that. We don't want other people to experience that. If I believe that war is not the answer, um, if I believe that the UN you know, should be supported by us as well as everybody else, um, then I guess I need to stand up and say something. Ain't no mountain high enough, baby. That's why Andrea is walking today. If my husband had been hit by a truck, I would be suffering in some, in some ways the same way as I am. He's gone. But then it gets much more complicated with the fact of 9-11. And for most of us, we feel like like we've been handed a responsibility that we can't put down. And sometimes that's been really hard, you know? We've often, I think a lot of us, have wanted to just shrink away, you know, and go, go lick our wounds and, and suffer our grief privately. But we can't, we can't, because there's, there's consequences of, of what we're doing and what's going on. Feels like the brakes are on. The vigil started on its way to New York in late July. Along the way, the group has met with supporters, some opposition, and the curious. This young lady joined in as the stone moved through her New Haven, Connecticut neighborhood. I'm walking to New York. I'll see y'all later. I don't believe in work. It doesn't solve anything. It just makes more problems. That's just like if I hit you and you hit me back. Who's going to stop? We're not going to stop till somebody decides to stop. But if I continue to hit you every time you hit me, we're going to continue to fight till somebody gets hurt. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe in war. I'd rather just talk my problems out. We keep reminding each other. We keep being reminded that it's the only way we can do anything. It's the only way we can change anything. Together. Together and step by step. You know, we're not changing the world by doing this. What, what but was we might change a few minds. Andrea has changed as well. September 11th left her with scars that working for a peaceful tomorrow has helped her heal. I can talk about Bob, you know, I talk about Bob all the time. And I can do it, but it's, but it's a different place than when the tidal wave hits and you realize that, oh my God, he's, he's, I'm never gonna see him again, you know, it's, it's real. And it, it's, what's surprising is that it keeps being surprising. So, but, you know, and 9-11 just doesn't stop. 
And so you, you have to protect yourself a little bit. You have to put it in some, some place separate or you'd just be shredded all the time. I wouldn't be able to do anything. So, so in a way, it's, it's been kind of good for me to have a place where I can actually just be me and feel sad sometimes and not have to explain myself.